today the, 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 the story is around bias, okay? And I'm sure uh, most of you have, have been exposed to the term and many of you would think, well, South Africa is one of the most diverse countries in the world. Surely uh, we are, we've had 20 or 20 odd years to become used to bias and to practice that in the workplace. But I think we all deep down know that uh, that's a little bit far from the truth and there's still a lot of bias uh, bias that prevails in our daily lives and in our workplace. Um, look, we, we live, particularly now, we live in a time of massive information flow. And uh, we've seen now in the last week what bias can do, both on an informational level, a leadership level, and actually affects people's lives in the most tragic way. So um, we, as Novia One, we also host hundreds of uh, learnerships for unemployed graduates every year. And when you look at the research, why are graduates struggling to find jobs? Why is unemployment so high? There are three cited reasons. That's the research based on the University of Johannesburg, particularly the financial, what that was conducted in the financial services sector a few years ago. And the three reasons that came up why there's such high unemployment among, amongst graduates is, first of all, if quite fair enough, that can be bridged, okay? Uh, the lack of work experience was often was, was a second most uh, frequent reason cited for graduates not being given a job. And that is also a remediable issue. But the third one, and that's very interesting, is one of uh, where, where respondents said there's a lack of cultural fit. And um, you can pack a lot of stuff in there. OK, and I think some of that stuff is going to come out in the conversation today. So let's talk about the history of bias. Bias comes from the Greek word, the ancient Greek word. The, the ancient Greeks were the inventors of, of uh, let's say, a lot of the philosophy that we know about today. And it comes from the word epikasios, which means an angled line. Something runs off at an angle. It was then actually uh, used by the French. And that's where the word bias, the actual term bias was coined, it was used by the French in the 15th century when they invented a game called boule or bowls, which is a game played still today in every little village in France, they play this in the parks. You can see that, you can see them playing today and they have to toss a steel ball uh, and trying to hit a small wooden ball, which is a target. And they noticed that a lot of these steel balls would not run a straight line, but drift to one side. They had a preponderance to either move to the left or to, the, or to the right. And so that term bias of being prejudiced and having a preponderance or a likelihood of thinking one way or another, that was then termed. And the great writer and philosopher Voltaire in the 18th century lived in the time of huge religious intolerance and massive state intervention and oppression. He started to write about these things. Um, and he, you know, the writer of, and thinker of the Age of Enlightenment, and he even tried to rewrite history. He said history is full of bias. Everyone's got got preconceived ideas and prejudices, and he was trying to rewrite it. I don't think he was very successful in those days, but he wrote a famous book called Candide that might, some of you might have heard of, and uh, it speaks around all those forces that work at a societal and at a human level that interfere with our ability to think clearly. So let me move on to our speaker, Susana Galvan, hails from Barcelona in Spain. Uh, she's a dual national, uh, holds Spanish and British nationality, and is fluent in, obviously, in English and Spanish, but also Catalan and Mandarin. Uh, she studied in Barcelona, Leeds, Beijing, and Taipei, and has lived and worked a lot for the British Council, um, first in London, and then as a director of education and arts in Burma. And uh, she's currently, uh, and then thereafter was a director in Taiwan. And since June last year, uh, a country director, a South African country director for the British Council here in Johannesburg. Um, she's very engaged in a number, on a number of levels. Is a member of the British Chamber of Commerce's Women in Business Committee and the European Women's Management Development International Network. And um, as I said, very diverse, is married to some one who's half German, half Chinese, has lived in many, speaks many languages, and has a keen interest in education and arts that Susanna uh, promotes in her own publications and has hosted her own radio shows, and also uh, regularly gives uh, TV interviews 
not only in English and Spanish, but in fluent uh, Mandarin, which is a very impressive um, event to watch. Okay, so now without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Susanna. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, thanks, Ty, for the introduction, which is um, very interesting and useful. Um, as, as Ty said, we, we have a bit, uh, an hour and 45 minutes. I know it feels like a long time, but um, I trust that the time will fly uh, and hopefully will be because you will enjoy the session. I think we've got lots of participants on the line. I mean, of course, all these sessions are always easier to do face to face, um, but uh, because of the situation we're in, technology is a great thing, but it could be also a very disruptive thing. Um, so I hope technology is on our side today and that um, what we will try to do is make this session as uh, engaging and participative as possible. So I think you, all have access to the chat if you can just say hi on the chat so i know that some people are out there because throughout the session you can use the chat to participate and of course we'll stop at lots of points during the session to allow you to also um uh, uh chip in if you want uh through chat or through voice lots of highs wow yeah hello oh i feel better now i was feeling a bit lonely lots of people yeah, thank you so much, guys. Okay, so we're gonna start. Yeah, I feel better, you can see, no? I'm smiling. Um, well, I think Ty already made a, a very nice introduction uh, of myself. Thank you, Ty, you make me feel very important. Um, I hope you can see the slides and the presentation on the screen. Um, hopefully it will work. But yeah, you can see me here <laughs> and you can see a picture of me on the screen as well. I choose this picture. I mean, Ty has talked a little bit about my, my own background, but as we will learn in the session today, um, unconscious bias or any kind of bias, we, we developed through our lives uh, and experiences in a cultural context. So, you know, the, the, the experiences we face as individuals uh, make us unique. And in that sense, also our, bias, uh, our biases that develop over time are unique in that sense. And they also change over time. So as Ty said, you know, I'm from Barcelona. Originally, that's where I was born. So in terms of my own cultural identity, I feel very Catalan. Part of me feels a bit of Spanish. And because uh, uh, my long years of work with the British Council, um, as Ty said, I became a dual national not long ago. You, you know, there's a part of me that feels British. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm, a, I'm a woman, I'm a white woman who grew up and was raised in, in a very kind of Spanish culture. So that kind of defined me very much. But because of my job, uh, I've been very lucky that to, to travel around the world and work and live in many different parts of the world, uh, especially a lot of work and time in East Asia, in Taiwan, in Malaysia, in Burma in China as well. And, and we, I was lucky to be posted to South Africa in June last year where we moved, uh, when I moved with, with my family, which you can see in the photograph. So, you know, all that hot pot of experiences, my upbringing, my job, the people I've encountered, of course, my own family, all that is what defines me as an individual. And as we will learn, um, that also defines my own biases, uh, being conscious or unconscious. 